Hello and welcome. Last week, the desperate plight of Princess Latifah caused worldwide shock and concern. In secret video messages revealed by the BBC, she says she was abducted after she tried to run away and is being held captive by her father, the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed Rashid Al Maktoum. But now the BBC can reveal another plea from Latifa, this time raising questions for Britain. 20 years ago, her in the UK, her sister, Shamza, also tried to escape from their father, but was recaptured and taken back to Dubai. An investigation by Cambridgeshire Police was closed due to insufficient evidence. The BBC has now obtained a letter written by Princess Latifa to the police with a plea to reopen her sister's case. Our special correspondent, Nawala Magafi, reports. Sheikh Mohammed Rashid Al Maktoum, the billionaire ruler of Dubai and one of the most powerful men in the Middle East. Last week, the BBC released secret recordings of his daughter, Princess Latifa. In them, she claims he is responsible for her abduction and imprisonment. The messages sparked international concerns. But Latifa is not the only daughter of Sheikh Mohammed to try to escape. Twenty years ago, her sister Shamsa ran away from the family estate in Surrey. In 2000, my sister Shamsa, while she was on holiday in England, she was um, 18 years old, going on 19, she ran away. So, yeah, after two months, they found her. The police launched an investigation, but it hit a dead end. Now the BBC has obtained an exclusive letter written by Princess Latifa from her captivity. In it, a plea to reopen her sister's case. The letter, delivered by her friends yesterday to Cambridgeshire Police, says Shamsa has strong links with England. Her fondest memories are of her time here. Your help and attention could free her. We've pieced together Shamsa's extraordinary story. She was a passionate horse rider and loved spending summers at her father's estate in the Surrey countryside. Uh, Shamsa was cheeky, uh, liked to push all the, the boundaries, and uh, she wasn't uh, what you would call a, a princess, you know. Um, she was full of life and ad adventure. She dreamt of going to university but says that her father wouldn't allow it. So in the summer of the year 2000, she drove a black Range Rover to the edge of the estate and she ran away. After Shamsa escaped her father's estate in Longcross, she lived as a free woman for around two months. She then checked in to this hotel in Cambridge. Suddenly, her father's operatives arrived and she was captured. By 5 a.m. the next morning, she was on a helicopter to northern France, where she was transferred to a private jet that took her to Dubai. Six months later, from her captivity in Dubai, Shamsa managed to get word of what happened to her to a lawyer in the UK who contacted the police. DCI David Beck received the news. It's not every day that an allegation involving a head of state lands on a police officer's desk. In 2001, DCI David Beck needed to go to Dubai to speak to Shamsa. He applied through the Crown Prosecution Service. And that's effectively where my investigation came to an end because uh, a short while later I was informed that my request had been um, declined. He was later told by a senior colleague that the investigation has some significant sensitivities. The London office of the princess's father, Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum, had contacted the FCO about this. The Foreign Office told us that the investigation was conducted by Cambridgeshire Police and that they had no role in the investigation or its outcome. But they declined to answer any of our questions about the communication between them and Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum's office. Shamsa was kept locked up for the next eight years. She was then released from confinement, but her life remained heavily controlled. We spoke to someone who had regular contact with her after she was released. She was tranquilized all the time. Everything she did was controlled. There was no spark in Shamza anymore. There was no fight in her. And I understand that people can't get their head around it. They just see some rich girl. It's not like that at all. It's horrific. The UAE government maintain that Shams and Latifa are cherished and adored by their family. They're yet to prove that they're still alive and well.
Well, I spoke to Noelle a short time ago and I asked her what reaction there'd been to Latifa's message. So they've said that they are reviewing Shamsa's case and that they'll take this letter from Princess Latifa into account. I think what caused so much reaction to Princess Latifa's case is the messages that we broadcast last week. It was a way for her to tell the world what's actually happening to her, whereas Princess Shamsa, her older sister, hasn't had that opportunity. I mean, last week, after we broadcast her messages, we heard from the UN, who've said they've asked the UAE for proof of life of Princess Latifa. Uh, we also heard from the Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the Foreign Minister Dominic Raab, um, who've said that they're going to follow closely what the UN is doing and that the videos are deeply distressing. And also from Secretary of State, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who said he'll be following closely as well. Do we know how Princess Latifa is? So Princess Latifa, the last we ever heard from her was in those messages. Uh, the phone that she was using to record those sacred messages has been silent for a couple of months now. And that's what encouraged her friends to decide that now is the time to broadcast those messages. Um, but what we, the only thing we know is that the UAE, from their statement last week, has said that she will return to public life when she can. And Princess Shamsa? Princess Shamsa, we haven't heard anything from, actually. I mean, the last we know of her is that statement that we heard from someone who was working closely with her uh, from a couple of years ago, and also Princess Latifa, who says um, that her sister is like a zombie now, that she has been given tranquilizers, given drugs, and is not herself anymore. But that, that's all we know.